Well, where does Turkey fit in, this Islamic country that is helping support these people? A very, I think we did mention in an earlier interview, Maris, that there has been a very long effort over a long period of time to brainwash the Turkish people who are still uh, uh, conscious of their religious obligations and who still hold fast to those obligations, brainwash them. That brainwashing took place through a Sufi movement. And these are the people who brought this government into power in Turkey. And uh, this government in Turkey deceived us. We thought that it had certain credentials that were genuinely Islamic. We thought so. Uh, certain credentials, not all. And then when the, the matter of the flotilla took place, we saw them standing very proudly uh, up against Israel. But it was dust in our eyes. It was dust in our eyes. This government in Turkey is uh, very firmly entrenched within NATO and uh, acting on behalf of NATO in the matter of Syria. We did give a warning to them. There's a, a statement on my website, which I issued maybe about two months ago, when the aircraft, the Turkish aircraft, was shot down. Uh, in Syrian airspace or just outside of Syrian airspace, uh, warning that there is an imminent possibility that the Turkish armed forces might launch an invasion of Syria on behalf of NATO. And that if that were to occur, the consequences would be disastrous for Turkey because it's going to provoke civil war in Turkey. Our prophet has prophesied, and political analysts in the Western world should now pay careful attention to what Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, has prophesied. He has prophesied the great war which is now around the corner. In Arabic it's called the Malhama. Others call it Armageddon. But it's a great war that will make the First and Second World War look like a fight over peanuts. And uh, following that great war, he is prophesied the conquest of Constantinople. And so a Turkish attack on Syria is certainly going to provoke Turkish civil war which eventually is going to lead to the conquest of Constantinople. And the conquest of Constantinople can make military sense only in one context, only one. And that is liberating the city from NATO control. And the liberation of the city from NATO control can have only one significant military impact. And that is opening the Bosphorus for the Russian Navy and for the navies of Eastern Europe to pass through the Bosphorus and to enter into the Mediterranean and therefore pose a threat to Israel. Well, there is a lot of disquiet now in Turkey. There are demonstrations against the AKP. There are intellectuals writing such articles. Even the New York Times featured it. So uh, he's, he, there is trouble uh, being witnessed within Turkey about the policy and the trouble it has brought upon the country. M may I ask you, today, of all things, John McCain, who is a hawk, is suggesting that it might be time to withdraw the troops early from Afghanistan. And there's a similar proposal in the British Parliament. So the tables have turned there. Or is this a strategic move um this is news to me i thought it was 2014 that obama was planning to withdraw from afghanistan 
But when they, when they tell me, when the Zionists tell me, Morris, that the sun is shining in the sky, I don't believe them. I go outside and look in the sky. And when I see the sun shining in the sky with my own eyes, only then do I believe it. So I don't believe these statements about withdrawing from Afghanistan. They are in Afghanistan because the target is Pakistan. The target is Pakistan because Pakistan possesses nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons pose the only significant threat to Israel. That threat has to be removed if Israel is to succeed the United States and become the last, the third and last ruling state in the modern world. That's what 9-11 was all about. And this happened on 9-11 in Libya. It's more than a coincidence. They say it was actually pre-planned. You, you just triggered this by mentioning 9-11. The American ambassador was, was murdered on 9-11 again. This is a subject in which I don't have expertise. It's called symbolism and the occult. But we just had a seminar on September 1st and 2nd here in Malaysia. On September 1st, I conducted a seminar on an introduction to Islamic eschatology. And then on September 2nd, we had a wonderful presentation from a man named Dr. Omar Zaid, uh, a medical doctor and a, Christ a former Christian missionary who became Muslim. And he gave a presentation on symbolism and the occult. And uh, it is clear from what he informed us, he, he spoke, it is clear that the Zionists do have links with the occult, and they would choose certain dates because certain dates are aligned with the stars and so on, as in Hinduism, so too with the Zionists. So, but this is not a subject in which I have any expertise. I much prefer to look at early September as uh, the last stop before early November. <laughs> okay, well, you're, you're absolutely right about the numbers. It's, it's extraordinary. People collate them and put them on the internet between the different false flag events, Madrid, London, 9-11, and there are uh, consistencies numerically. Well, you know, I just worry if they're going to withdraw from Afghanistan, it might be like they withdrew from Iraq. They withdrew from Iraq and suddenly there was trouble in Syria. Are they going to tactically withdraw from Afghanistan to attack Pakistan in another manner? I'm only looking for the devil always. What will the devil do next? I, I, am, I am not in a position to comment on uh, the implications of a withdrawal from Afghanistan. Uh, I, 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 I take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, I believe that uh, the attack on Pakistan is certain to come uh, because I don't see the possibility at all of Israel ever replacing the United States as a ruling state in the world while Pakistan or Muslims possess nuclear weapons. I don't see that possibility at all. I believe this is why 9-11 was... Uh, planned and executed so that they could get their troops into Afghanistan, so that from Afghanistan they could destabilize Pakistan and eventually invade Pakistan. I think that is still on the card. Oh yes, the, the, through Helmand, that was the whole plan, and to, to break Baluchistan off from Pakistan and Iran. It failed. There was too much resistance in Helmand. Sheikh Imran Hussein, I do not know what else to ask you. Is there something we have missed? Um, there are the, violent, violent protests everywhere um, against American embassies. Three American embassies have been closed. Not only American embassies, I believe French embassies as well <laughs> are closing. Um, 